Hello, welcome to Practical Piano. In this series, I record every time that I practice so that you can see progress over time and hopefully draw inspiration from that. This is absolutely not a performance. The music is completely imperfect because I'm practicing. So quite a bit of it is new and quite a bit is not polished yet. Now, I have a ton of stuff I want to cover today. I have my Christmas song that I've chosen, which is a boogie style marshmallow world. I have Trans-Siberian Orchestra version. Well, actually it's not a version, it's their song Christmas Canon, but a version of Trans-Siberian Orchestra's Christmas Canon. And we need to go over Rondo Alaturka because out of all of my exam music, it's the most difficult on my hands. So I must go over this to keep my hands fresh. Also, I recently started practicing the original version of Howl's Moving Castle. So that is the list for today, pretty intense. And we're gonna start with Howl's Moving Castle because I think it's gonna be the best on my hands and I'm not going to do a warm up, I just wanna get straight in. So I'll do this as my warm up. No, I was right the first time, okay. So what I was checking there is I'm supposed to have an E flat because of the key signature. So I went to play this middle one, which has an E, and I was like, oh no, is it flat or is it not flat? And I hadn't looked at the key signature. It's important when you start a song, watch out for the key signature, because you have to know what's gonna be sharp, what's gonna be flat. And I haven't practiced this version of the song enough to be completely familiar with that. And in fact, I'm going to write in this E flat because it'll help me out. Okay, I've got the E flat in. Let's do this again. So my approach there was too fast because already I have to slow down and find what I'm looking for. So we're going to do this section again, but we're going to go slower. That's not slower. <laughs> Let's go again. The G stays the same. Let me jot this in because I discovered this in practice before, but I've forgotten it.
I did a sharp on the bottom note instead of a flat on the top note. That's something you might make mistakes on when you have these groups of three, well, intervals of three changing in a row. You might mix up which one gets the black key, which one gets the white key. So let me try this section again. Part of me wants to go on to the next section because this is going so nicely. But that's not the plan for today. I only have a limited time. And so we're going to play everything I just played one more time. Then we're going to do Rondo alla Turca because that's the plan. I must get to that. And then we'll do this Marshmallow Christmas. And then Christmas Canon the last because that's, that's the treat song. <laughs> mistake before what did I do I made the F a sharp let's make the F a natural for sure on the top. Let's write that F on the top. approach this section a little bit slower than I approached the first section because I don't know it as well. the G in the left hand instead. for 
this one. Lovely. Now here's something that often gets overlooked, especially if you're a beginner or if you're used to a lot of stress or tension in your body or in your life. Sometimes when we're playing piano, we forget to breathe. <laughs> and if you're finding you're playing some music and all of a sudden you realize that like you've been holding your breath since the start of the song or for like the last two lines, it's been way too long. You're holding your breath, you're on the edge. Did I get it right? You need to train yourself to breathe. And so at first that's gonna have to be intentional. Maybe you're gonna have to like, I'll breathe, I'll inhale on this measure and I'll exhale on the next measure. And we'll, we'll get into a pattern of doing that. Or maybe that's too much and you just need to consciously try and breathe in and out at least once a line. Either way, however you approach it, work breathing into your normal playing because it makes it much easier to play, especially as you start to, de to develop dynamics um, because you can get louder with your inhale. It makes it different. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to breathe in as I as I crescendo here. And then I go I release as I as I decrescendo. Let's do it with something bigger. That's the wrong pedal. That's why it sounds funky. Okay, let's go again. breathing into your dynamics, especially as you get much more comfortable with the song. Anyways, it's important to breathe. You need to oxygenate your brain cells or it's going to be harder to learn. And it feels better. And if you're not breathing, what, what you're doing is building up tension in your body. And the more tension that you associate with piano, the more tense you'll be coming to the piano. And you want to you want to try to cultivate an environment for yourself for practicing piano where you have positive emotions more often than you have negative emotions because if you have positive emotions associated more strongly with piano than you do the negative emotions you're going to feel way better about yourself you're going to enjoy playing much more especially if it's a passion already for you and you want to keep that passion going try and cultivate an environment where you feel more positive emotion when you play breathing is part of that rondo alaturka <laughs> So if you haven't played in a bit, especially challenging passages, maybe take in hands separate, because sometimes that can help a lot. Thank you. 
Oops. There we go. I'm noticing I'm a lot less tense than I was a few weeks ago when I go to play this. And I'm guessing this is because I had a lot more stress going on a few weeks ago because I had more on my plate. Now I have less on my plate and I can feel my body is more relaxed. And that's not an effort thing. So this might help you. If you find your practice changes, you're more prone to injure yourself, you're more prone to be tense, you're more tight chest, can't breathe. It could be outside piano. You've got things going on that are just more stressful. And so when you come and you sit down, you're more stressed out and your playing is more tense or more stiff or your body is more tense or you tire out more easily. And practice whenever you can anyways, because you don't have to come to your practice perfect. You don't have to come to your practice with completely relaxed arms. You don't have to come to your practice uh, completely de-stressed. You can start out carrying everything that you're carrying with your day. And if you've been following this series, you've seen I've progressed, even despite different things going on in my life, which you don't see. Any time that you invest towards your passion, you're still going to get results from it. You're still going to get a return on that investment, even if it's the little that you can give, as imperfectly as you can give it. And I hope that is a source of encouragement for you. Whoops. Okay, so I need to go to this D sharp chord. Instead of the E, I need to go to the D sharp first. So we're going to do this again. Oh, it can be very difficult to start in the middle of a tough section. Just be patient with yourself. Take your time to find the notes. I know that section, but when I started just there, something was off. But if I just take my time and I find each note, if I focus on one thing at a time, just find the next set of notes get it together and then find your next set of notes and play that one then it'll come together nicely okay let's start this section over now that I've played through this tough part also going to practice the end because the end is definitely the trickiest part here. Nice. left roll A. 
sharp. This is a very stretchy chord. sounds so tidy. is in better shape than it was last time I played it. And sometimes when you take a break from a song, that's what happens. It's super surprising. It's almost like your brain gets time to chew on it and your hands get time exercising on other things so that when they come back to this one, it's easier to execute. Okay, Marshmallow World. I love this song. I'm so excited for it. Is that tricky there's this tricky rhythm spot we're gonna have to we're gonna have to practice this at some point we only have 20 minutes and I want to play this carol tell you what this needs more work than this one this one is easier to play so we'll start with this one and then whatever time is left we'll devote to drilling the other one now here's the thing it's good to make plans. It helps you a lot. It helps you organize your mind, your life, your practice. It's really, really helpful. It's also good to be able to change your plan as needed, when you need to, to accommodate new information, new circumstances. So I made that plan, and it was a good plan, and this is also a good plan. Now I know, okay, I really need to drill this section, but I have limited time and I really wanted to graze over all the songs. So because I know what I want, I can change my plan according to that. Part of your planning comes from knowing who you are and what you want and what you're looking to get out of the time and the effort and energy that you invest. Okay. I'm also super excited for this song.
need to write in some of these. So this is a low ledger note. And so I need to know what it is so that when I reach for it, I can hit it in time. So ledger line notes are, I'll display them on the screen. So there when we go below the staff or above the staff to notes that we don't usually play on the staff, especially when you're a beginner, you don't play these notes very often. As you get better and better, and you get tougher and tougher music, you're going to see these more and more often. Now, I'm not going to write in all of them, but I'm going to write in some markers for me so that I know what I'm coming back to when this, because this repeats. Oh, that one's a D, F sharp, A. That's the first time that one shows up. G, A, A, F sharp, G, D. That's the tough one right there because it's super low. G, A. Okay. Whoop. Now, I have to be careful here because the melody is actually in the left hand, not in the right hand, although both sound pretty. It's tough up here. Okay. Now I have to play a, a voice in the right hand and in the left hand, and I have to hop back. So I have to make my high notes very loud and keep this middle very even and keep my lo low notes pretty loud too. The charm, what makes Trans Siberian Orchestra music sound so good, is that they do use these low voices in the left hand. I love music where they use the lower voices because it's, it's uncommon. Usually, the melody is up here. Okay, this part I need to slow down for so that it's even because it will sound more musical when I slow it down. Well, it will sound more musical when I can play it evenly. because I mistook it for an A when it was a C. And let's play this part again because it's tough. Did I write it wrong? Oh, it is a G. Definitely, when you have to go, when you have to move really fast, and you have to go loud and then soft, it's definitely the hardest to go from loud and hit that first note softly. Most likely, when you're first practicing that, you might be able to get these two soft, but you might get this first one after the loud one your first one after the loud note will be too loud. So it's very, very useful to do what I'm doing right now. And the voices that are loud, I exaggerate super loud and super soft. And go slow enough that you can land that quiet note 
quietly after you've hit the loud note. Go slow enough that you can slow down your pace and hit the note. See how I have time? I have time to place my hand so that I can measure how hard am I going to press that. That's what you want. Okay, next section. This is going to be intense, so let's slow down here. fun and I want to I want to get it better let's do it again So D, F, more ledger lines here. This one's an E. Okay. <laughs> Whoops, I rushed there to try and get to the next thing, but that is actually supposed to be held. <laughs> be tough because there's there's a singing line this night we pray our lives will show the stream he had each child knows but the given piano version for this so that's the vocal line this is a piano vocal guitar so it's got vocal line guitar tabs and two piano staves the piano stave goes this night Our lives 
Yeah. So I have to figure out which one do I want to play. It's going to sound prettier with the... I wonder if I can do the right hand line in the left hand. That's the timer. It's time to go. This one's a puzzler. I have to figure it out. I might just do... So this is a D, F, A that they're calling for, and I might just play D, F, A in the left hand and in the low notes instead of in the right hand area. Okay. do that instead. sounds great and I'm going to write down what I'm doing. So here, D, F sharp, A, F sharp. I'm taking each chord that they give me and playing it differently than they wrote it. This is really, really hard to do unless you've made quite a lot of practice, unless you're an advanced or intermediate player. So um, don't let that discourage you. If you're looking at a song, trying to change things and play it like I just did, this is um, improvisation. If you find it very hard to improvise, that's okay. Until about three years ago, and I've been playing for 20 years, a little bit more now. No, about 20 years. Until about three years ago, I could not improvise. And when I started to improvise, I was very, very, very bad at it. So don't feel bad. If you can improvise off the hop, good, good for you. But if it's not your strength, people have different strengths. And there's nothing wrong with you for not being able to just change things like I just did, pull them out of your head. I used to think there was something wrong with me. There wasn't, I wasn't ready. <laughs> All right, thank you for joining me for this practice session. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you in the next video. If you like the video, please like it. If you know anyone who would also like it, please share. If you want more, subscribe. And if you have any feedback, please leave a comment. Thank you.